Aragon watched for danger for several long minutes, but the only thing that moved was the mist. Cautiously, he released the tension from his bow and moved forward. Moonlight cast him in pale shadow as he stopped before the stone. He nudged it with an arrow, then jumped back. Nothing happened, so he warily picked it up. Nature had never polished a stone as smooth as this one. Its flawless surface was dark blue, except for thin veins of white that spider webbed across it. The stone was cool and frictionless under his fingers, like hardened silk. Oval and about a foot long, it weighed several pounds, though it felt lighter than it should have. Aragon found the stone both beautiful and frightening. Where did it come from? Does it have a purpose? Then a more disturbing thought came to him. Was it sent here by accident? Or am I meant to have it? If he had learned anything from the old stories, it was to treat magic, and those who use it, with great caution. But what should I do with the stone? It would be tiresome to carry, and there was a chance it was dangerous. It might be better to leave it behind. A flicker of indecision ran through him, and he almost dropped it. But something stayed his hand. At the very least, it might pay for some food, he decided with a shrug, tucking the stone into his pack. The glen was too exposed to make a safe camp, so he slipped back into the forest, spread his bedroll under the upturned roots of a fallen tree. After a cold dinner of bread and cheese, he wrapped himself in blankets and fell asleep, pondering what had occurred. What's the difference between a good story and a bad story? How does one know if he is reading a work that celebrates the genre it's in, or just filling a checklist to please its niche audience. And finally, is the story original, or ripping off a better story? Let's find out. Hello Internet, welcome to Bookworm Reviews. I'm your host, The Bookworm, and Dragon Month continues. Sit back and relax as we dive into... Aragon, the first of the Inheritance Trilogy by Christopher Polalini. He's a real nowhere man Sitting in his nowhere land Making all his nowhere plans For nobody Doesn't have a point of view no. In the land of Allegasia, it is a time of peril and unrest. The ruthless king, Galpatorix, rules the land with an iron fist. Far north, in the small village of Carvajal, Aragon, a young farm boy, finds a blue stone in the spine that appears out of nowhere. However, he is proven wrong when it hatches to reveal a dragon. But dragons have been gone since Galpatorix has betrayed and destroyed the old order, the Dragon Riders, long before he was born. Soon, Aragon will be forced into a larger world and will be forced to make choices that would change not only his, but Allegasia's future. Aragon is not what I would call the most original story. It follows every cliched fantasy trope you could think of. A far off land? Check. Elves, dwarves, and dragons? Check. Evil empire? Check. An everyman hero to rise, gain special items, and friends to save the day? What do you think? Also, I have to say it now because anyone who has read the book knows it. The plot and characters kind of resemble Star Wars. It literally becomes a checklist of who is playing whom. Aragon, Luke. Arya, Princess Leia. Murtaugh, Han Solo. Bronn, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Magic, the Force. The Varden, the Rebel Alliance. The Empire. The Empire. As well as several plot elements that can pretty much trace a new hope if it was set in the Lord of the Rings universe. You might think then that I think this is a cliched piece that shouldn't have gotten the intention it did. Wrong! Honestly, it's one of my favorite fantasy books of all time. It's one of the first to really sink me into its fantasy world. Because of one thing. The one thing that can save any work from being a poor, lackluster piece of genre trash. Passion. Passion. You can feel the passion in Chris's writing. It's his love letter to everything about the fantasy genre. If you look at the writers that inspired him, David Evans, Andre Norton, Brian Jacques, Anne McCaffrey, Brian E. Feist, 
Marvin Peek, Ursa K. Lee Gung, Eric Rucker Edison, Frank Herbert, Philip Pullman, Garth Nix, and Tolkien. Because you don't write fantasy without reading Tolkien. While I haven't read from every author listed here, I know enough to see their influences, which in many ways makes Aragon the perfect gateway book into high fantasy. If you're a veteran, then this might not impress you as much. But if you want a great high fantasy book that features all the classic tropes done well, a quest, a journey of experience, revenge, romance, betrayal, and a special sword, because you must always have a special sword, then this is the ticket. And just because it follows many conventions, doesn't mean that there aren't some interesting and new creatures, like the Urgles, huge gray skin horned creatures that are a cross between ogres and Klingons, to the Razak. Man, do these things creep me the hell out. A great nightmare creature that you know isn't human, but the book doesn't give them away just yet, leaving them to fester in your mind. <sighs> Plus, we have no clue what Galvatorix looks like, but you feel his power everywhere, an ominous presence that makes you wonder just how Aragon will defeat him. Now I know I said Aragon could come off as simply Star Wars in the Lord of the Rings universe, but that is just a broad stroke that doesn't do the work justice. When you read it, you see how someone can still take the tired concepts we have come to know as high fantasy and yet tell an amazing story with well-developed characters. Which, when you think about it, is what Star Wars did with the hero's journey. That's the biggest highlight. Paulini did a fantastic job writing the book. Account for the fact that this was his first book, and it was published when he was like 18 or so, and became the huge hit that it is. This is not common, considering the fact that Aragon was originally self-published. Yeah. It was originally published within his family company, Paulini International, and it wasn't until the stepson of Carl Hayson read it that Carl called Konoff, and we have the book as it is today. Again, this is not a common thing, but we are better for it. The story of Aragon, at its heart, is a tale of growing up in a world that doesn't have simple answers. While there is a definitive good and bad side, it shows the politics the other races have how not all of them are good, and all want to use Aragon for their own agendas, making the biggest question of the series whether he will be his own man or a slave to another. The relationship with him and his dragon, Sephira. Did it take me this long to talk about the dragon? Anyway, the relationship between the two really showcases the lesson of two young minds growing up in a huge, cruel world. Because they both make huge mistakes and those mistakes cause major consequences for them. Seeing them grow and learn from them is the main driving force of the book and the series. Aragon is a great first book to the Inheritance trilogy with a great cast of characters who are fantastic like Rom and Murtaugh, but some don't really get their shine till the sequels. If you want a great introduction to high fantasy, you can't get any better than this. Though there are several plot moments that just make you go, well isn't that just dumb luck? Plus the ending can come off a bit rush. There isn't much else that needs to be said. For the genre, it gets an 8 out of 10. Personal, 8 out of 10. And overall, Aragon gets an 8 out of 10. Yep, straight 8s all around. I feel it does the genre justice. I loved it since my first read as a kid and it's a great gateway into a genre that is one of my all-time favorites. I'm just repeating myself now, but you should make the time to read it. You will not be disappointed. You know, it had just occurred to me that the books I have reviewed for Dragon Month so far are all about dragon riders. Because people riding dragons is cooler than being a dragon. Weird. And all were released in the 2000s. That's not right. I should look into a true classic about dragons. And if I'm going to be talking about dragons and their writers, then I might as well talk about the dragon writers. Till next time, have a nice day.